going to be sharing some of my favorite fall recipes this season, including a really tasty Instant Pot oatmeal, delicious, hearty, but fresh soup, um, the most delectable bite-sized pumpkin spice chocolate chip cookies that are a fan favorite around here, and a pumpkin hot chocolate. Now, the first three of those recipes are ones that I found via sources on the internet. So they will be, the original sources will be linked below. They are not my original recipes, although I have tweaked each of them just ever so slightly. Uh, but I'll share that when I get into the process. The pumpkin hot chocolate is a recipe I shared a couple years ago on this channel. I've changed it just slightly, but I'll link the original video because that original recipe is still just as scrumptious and essentially the same thing. But they've been really, all four of those recipes have been really in heavy rotation here this season and I wanted to share them with you. So let's get cooking. Apple pie oatmeal you make in your Instant Pot. Super easy, doesn't take too much time, simple ingredients, very delicious, hearty filling. I find that steel cut oats really keeps me full, much longer than any other kind of oatmeal. You want to prime your Instant Pot with some oil so the oats don't stick and burn. But use one cup of steel cut oats, two apples peeled and diced, two tablespoons of honey. You can increase this if you want sweeter. Uh, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of a cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, one cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk, and two cups of water. When you seal your Instant Pot, make absolutely sure that your pressure valve is closed. This is very important. Set your Instant Pot on manual high pressure for 10 minutes. A little later. Once it is done, I let it sit for about 10 minutes and then I manually release the pressure valve. And then once a little pin drops, it's safe to open. It looks a little bit soupy. It looks very liquidy when you first open it. I stir mine for about five, six minutes. You know, not constantly, but I give it a stir every, every so often for a few minutes and then it's ready. And I top with the chopped pecans, just as the recipe suggests. And it is so delicious. Now, like I said, this is not super sweet. There's only a tiny bit of honey in it and it makes quite a bit. I would say enough for four big bowls like this. Um, so if you want to add more sweetener in to your taste, go ahead and do so. But it's just so warming and beautiful for a crisp fall morning. Veggie quinoa soup. I got this recipe on YouTube actually, and I've altered it a little bit to suit my tastes a bit more, but it is just such a nice transitional seasonal soup. I really feel like it took me from summer into fall. I love soups in the fall. It's just got such vibrant, beautiful, healthy ingredients. It's chock full of nutrients, and the butternut squash and the sweet potato make it feel very full. Of course, your on onion goggles are super important, clearly, uh, to chop said onions. I've been really into cooking lately, and what's helped me be less afraid, I would say, of cooking is prepping everything in advance. This is called mise en place, and it's a kind of uh, technique where you chop and get everything ready before you start the cooking process. This just really has helped me. Having everything set and ready to go just means I'm not scrambling around the kitchen. So I heat up a few tablespoons of olive oil in a large pot. I have doubled this recipe in essence from the original. You add in your chopped onion, celery, and carrots. Five minutes later. And then add in some garlic and I just stir this in for about 30 seconds until it's fragrant. Then I'll pop in the bay leaves and the vegetables um, that are remaining to and let those roast for a little while to soften. 11 minutes later. At this point I added in all the remaining ingredients including the diced tomatoes, the quinoa, all of the spices. I use fresh rosemary, dry thyme, and then three liters of stock, vegetable stock. Stir it all together, bring this to a simmer. 20 minutes later. And then I turn off the heat. You can, uh, you can cook this for as long as you want, really. It takes about 20 minutes for the quinoa to be finished. Add in some kale. I love to serve this with avocado toast. It is delicious. Bite-sized pumpkin spice chocolate chip cookies from Six Vegan Sisters. I love their baked recipes. 
never have one of their recipes failed me. These cookies are a favorite in my family. We've made them so many times already this season. It's a very simple chocolate chip cookie with the addition of um, pumpkin puree, canned pumpkin puree, and pumpkin spice to make them very fall festive. Um, and you know, you cut in the ingredients like you would in any cookie recipe. Sorry my camera is so overexposed. I'm still working on my camera setup. But um, mix in all the dry ingredients together and uh, whisk them. I like whisking dry ingredients to really get them um, incorporated well. And then the wet ingredients, I'm using earth balance sticks. Those are my favorite for baking um, sugars. You know, it's kind of a standard cookie recipe, what can I say? Um, but in this one, I'm adding all of the wet ingredients together, including the pumpkin and the vanilla and just a little tiny bit of oat milk. You can add more in if you need it. I tend to eyeball that depending on how dry it is in the air, but two tablespoons is what the recipe calls for. I've been really enjoying using my handheld mixer. It's just, I don't know, it's fun. And the kids love holding it too uh, when, they, when they bake with me, which they often do. For this recipe, using the mixer, you just wanna be careful not to over mix your dry ingredients into the wet. So I do it in three batches and just for a very short time until it's just combined and then I'll turn the mixer off you do not want to overbeat this and add in chocolate chips I eyeball this they say one and a half cups I don't actually know how many I put in I find they are usually pretty generous with how many chocolate chips that they call for in their recipes so I just like to eyeball this based on on how I like and I just had to include this footage because it's I don't know why it's so satisfying to me to see the little balls of dough just <laughs> <laughs> laid out on the cookie sheet it just makes me happy oh so happy anyway preheat your oven to 350 and then pop them in there I do two sheets at a time I just rotate them halfway through four to five minutes and then rotate bake again for four to five minutes they come out perfect so scrumptiously yummy and like I said family favorite last but not least my favorite for fall pumpkin hot chocolate. This is a recipe I shared a couple years ago in a video, which I'll link for you. Um, it's essentially the same recipe. I'm just using slightly different chocolates. So I'm using the Four Sigmatic Cocoa Mix, which is my favorite kind of base cocoa mix for any cocoa I make lately. It has a nice cinnamony flavor to it. And then I love this Ritual Drinking Chocolate, which is a Utah-based company that I um, was interest introduced to about a year ago that I love. And this is just the most decadent, most decadent drinking chocolate. It makes every hot chocolate feel like you're sitting in a cafe in Italy and they're basically pouring you melted chocolate and calling it hot chocolate. <laughs> so delicious. Um, so the key to hot chocolate to me is just whisking it into oblivion. I heat up the milk and then I turn off the heat. I'm using oat milk, by the way, for everything. Of course, if you're a marshmallow or a whipped cream person or both, I'm a marshmallow girl myself. The more marshmallows, the better. I like to put my marshmallows in first and then pour the hot chocolate over because they get nice and ooey-gooey that way. But of course, you can use your whipped topping. I found this new oat milk one from Whole Foods, which was exciting. If you want to get real fancy, pop some pumpkin spice on top of there, and you've got yourself a party. Yum. I hope you enjoyed these recipes that I'm sharing today. Again, the links for all of them can be found below if you'd like to follow them step by step from the original sources. I'd love to know what some of your fall favorite go-to recipes have been if you care to share. In the comments below, please do. And I will see you real soon. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and take good, good care. Bye.